I'm Christine Benz from Morningstar.com. Working longer can make a lot of financial sense, but it's not achievable in every case. Joining me to discuss that topic is retirement expert Mark Miller. Mark, thank you so much for being here. Hi, Christine. Mark, let's talk about uh, working longer. When you look at labor force mm -hmm. participation rates, we do tend to see older yeah. people are staying in there Definitely. a little longer. Yeah, I mean, that's really the good news is that a lot of people have caught and gotten the message about the value of staying in the workforce longer in terms of bolstering retirement security. And of course, with a really strong economy, you know, there's labor demand. And so more people are finding the ability to work is there. Uh, more employers are starting to figure out that, um, gee, maybe I better figure out ways to keep my older workers, you know, employed and happy because they they need workers. So th that is a, you know, really dramatic change from certainly back, you know, during the depths of the Great Recession when right. older workers took it, took it pretty hard in terms of job loss there. It took them a long time to replace the yeah, jobs so we, they lost. Yeah, so too, we right? are, exactly. So, and so we're seeing higher labor force participation rates across the board, but definitely among older workers too. Okay. So let's discuss the financial positives mm -hmm. for workers in terms of staying in there. Why right. might people consider this sure. as part of their retirement planning? Yeah, I think it's one of the most powerful lever levers you can pull in terms of your retirement plan and improving your retirement security. There's several reasons for it. One is you're going to have fewer net years of, war, of, of life that have to be funded out of your retirement assets right. and more years that are funded through work. It you know, sets you up to delay your Social Security filing. And as we've discussed often, uh, you know, that's really positive. You get 8% additional uh, benefits for every 12 months that you delay, give or take, starting at 62 when you can file up to 70, which is the last a year in which additional credits are available. I mean, you know, net it out, it can be like a 70% boost in your monthly Social Security benefit, for benefit across that span. So that's huge. Uh, it can mean more years of socking away money in a retirement account, and these are years where you can do the catch-up savings. So for some households, maybe they, some expenses are in the rearview mirror now of college tuition and the like for kids. Can be years where you can sock away a lot more money. So. In several different ways, it can really be very, very powerful. So it's you know it's a great aspiration. Okay, and you often make this point: great aspiration, mm -hmm. not necessarily a plan. Right. So let's talk about how there can sometimes be a disconnect, yes. and the data show that there's a disconnect between someone's stated desire to retire at X age versus when they actually do yes. retire. What do the data show? Yeah, so I mean, the scariest thing I hear from people is my plan is I'll work forever. Yes. This is really worries me because the data show that, you know, 40 to 50% of people wind up retiring earlier than they projected or planned to do. And that happens for a variety of reasons. So, you know, it is uh, it is asper a terrific thing if you can pull it off, but you need to also have a plan B, I, I say. Okay. So a variety of reasons, health considerations or maybe spouse health considerations. Health is a big one. Uh, job loss still is a, an issue, even though, as we were discussing, the economy is strong. Right. Burnout. You know, people tend to, us to underestimate, you know, their ability to just hang in if it's not work that they love. Um, and then, you know, it's interesting when you, I, I interviewed a researcher for a story on this who's taken a close look at the survey data and why people wind up leaving earlier. And he, what he said, he said something interesting is like, these reasons that you and I were just discussing only really explain maybe a third hmm. of the early departures. He says, there's a whole lot going on out there that we don't have a good handle on that's harder to measure. So. You know, those are the reasons some of the time, and other things happen. Okay, you know? more work to be done there. But yeah. let's discuss um, what's in the toolkit for people, and I think this describes a lot of uh, pre-retirees. They're looking at their portfolios. Maybe they've seen them nicely enlarged, but they're still worried about a shortfall. Right. So what are the other levers that they can pull. Uh, right. Working longer might be one piece yeah. of it if they can, but what other things should well, they think about? You know, I think one thing that's worth thinking about is thinking carefully about your career trajectory as early as, let's say, age 50. You know, think carefully about, is this a job that I think I can stick with to whatever my projected retirement age is or not? Right. If not, think strategically about a change. Maybe you should be changing employers or the career you're doing, or do you want to go off and do something independent where you have more control? There's there's a lot of interesting work being done out there by people who specialize in in, in this part of it, kind of career strategy for midlife. I've written a lot about it. Yes, Others you have. have too. 
And so I think I would start with that. But you know, beyond that, I think plan B is just save as much as you can because that's your cushion. Okay. And then you know, you might, if you were able to save enough that, let's say there's a, you have to leave the workforce earlier than you hoped, you might still be able to delay that social security filing by living off of some of those savings for a few years, you, you know, bridging it, if you will. Important topic, Mark. Thank you so much for being here to discuss it with us. Thank you, Christine. Thanks for watching. I'm Christine Benz for Morningstar.